So I get to call my boss up here, uh, Charlie Dolman, Event Operations Director, working with Outside Services. Charlie. I got some slides. Oh, great. I just want to say, listening to all of these people talk, there's a ton of, thanks. Uh, there's a ton of stuff, and it's kind of complicated. And so I just want to say that we, as an organization, are here to facilitate you guys. And so if something comes up and you don't know, you have a question, but you don't know the answer, please, at any point, do just reach out to us. If you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it, get in touch and we'll try and figure out a way, we'll figure out the answer and then figure out a way to share the information. Um, there is a lot of information about Burning Man on our website and one of the things we're doing in the next year is an overhaul of like how that is managed and presented and communicated because over 25, seven years, whatever it is, it's got really complicated. Anyway, outside services, who knows what outside services is? Okay, great, a bunch of you, yeah, good. So I just wanted to really, the, the program was started four years ago because uh, we had companies that would otherwise not be coming to the playa. For example, a generator company, they don't come to the playa for fun. Um, we had a bunch of these companies turning up at the event and they were coming in the main gate. Now, people can bring stuff in the main gate, but it is super inefficient for businesses and ultimately super inefficient on our infrastructure. What happens is when the businesses take time to do that, they then charge it back to the participants because, hey, it took them... I don't know, however many hours to do the thing. Uh, and um, suddenly our guys at the gate are being presented with these trucks loaded up with weird stuff and they're kind of like, well, it's business is working. Like what we, it was hard for us to keep track of what was going on. So we set up this outside services program. This uh, program has grown and ballooned and uh, significantly in the four years um, as camps have got more complicated, as the uh, things that people are wanting to build uh, have, have increased in complexity. People are like, oh, I could use help with that. I need a building or I need a scaffolding company or I want someone to come and pump my RVs or I need to bring in some generators and a whole pile of distro gear or, uh, you know, food service, reefer trucks. There's a pretty much endless list of stuff that people need as part of their thing. So we are taking some time this year to kind of step back from this program and say, you know, and it's really kind of, there's some, there's some consequence here from the whole kind of turnkey thing as well. What is the intention of this program? What are we, what are we trying to do for the community in Black Rock City? What are we trying to facilitate? Um, and so we're kind of taking a look at that because we kind of put it together and it was pretty small and it's gone. I mean, this last year we had I, a thousand plus deliveries, a lot of a lot of gear with all the different things coming in, which was a, a lot, right? So it's time for us to be like, okay, what are we, what are we doing here? And there's some really deep philosophical questions, which honestly is going to take us a really long time to answer. But I thought what I would do is I would just walk you through the aims and goals of the program, so that you can see the tenets, the kind of, if you like, the principles which we're trying to use to guide the growth of the program. I don't have any answers yet for uh, some of the questions that will come out of this, but I think it's helpful if you guys know w what it is that we're trying to achieve with this program. It will help you understand better how to interact with it. Not People haven't been doing a bad job, but as we begin to move forwards, there's some, there's some triggers for thought in here, and we will put a lot of time and thought into Black Rock City. So that's what I'm gonna do. So, uh, there's t nine goals of the program, um, and as Dave said, uh, radical, what did you say, Dave? Radical, radical collaboration, right. The first one, radical collaboration. Facilitate the creation of interactive projects in Black Rock City by levering econ leveraging economies of scale and efficiencies through shared services, right? So helping companies figure out that if one company's coming, we and you are all using the same company, then we get efficiencies of scale. Uh, educational resources for participants. We have found companies coming in, they are trying to sell stuff on the side of the road, their workers are coming in and they're just leaving their trash on the floor. There's many things that people are doing that are not really aligned with the way that we would like people to behave in Black Rock City. Have I been talking for five or I have five left? Five. Both, okay. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, and so there's an opportunity here that we should, we can encourage people. For example, the U-Haul thing. I don't know if anyone saw the U-Haul thing last year. They didn't like people covering up their logos on the side of the van with really, really sticky stuff. So they actually provided for people going to Burning Man a piece of vinyl that you could stick over the U-Haul logo that was easy for them to get off at the end. So in a kind of little way, they understood what we were trying to do. They provided a way to do it. So just simple little things like that that really speak to them having an understanding of who we are and how we work. Be a resource for participants so they can make informed choices about which vendors to engage in. Some people are great, some people are not great. Some people listen, other people are like, fuck you, I just want to make money. With that, not, that's not a cool stance, really, for any of us. Um, shape the impact of the outside service providers operation on the staff and the infrastructure and the culture. Kind of way of saying the same thing. Um, people bumping into us, we want to have uh, preservation of the culture and the integrity of the culture. So resource for participants, informed choices, uh, support service providers adhering to all government agencies. Rosalie talked about that a little bit. Uh, we have the Leave No Trace program. We have the compliance program. You would be amazed how many RVs delivered through the program last year came without the Blackwater cap. So. Uh, you, you know, we live and we learn and we move forward, but there are all sorts of things. Generators come in with busted seals, all sorts of things. And, and because of the environmental compliance, we are actually in a national conservation area. It's actually written into the, um, the document that consecrated the national conservation area that we are allowed to be there. Do you know that that is, we are the only one in the country that that actually happens? So it's super special. Thank you, legal department, for making that happen and we need to be super conscious of it. Um, support the long-term sustainability of Burning Man. Uh, people come, people give, and some people come and they take, and really we want to try and preserve the, the giving as much as possible. Um, and then the last three, keep the scale of the program. Now this is a really interesting one for us. What happens if everybody wants to have an RV delivered, or everybody wants to have a generator delivered, or everybody wants their own, uh, their own potties in their own camp? A thousand camps. The my, I'm brain short. Anyway, so I don't know what that means, but it's a thing, right? We need to we need to think about that. Um, there's some money that gets charged to those vendors that has to cover the cost of administering the program, making sure the stuff gets in, making sure the ground gets cleared up, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we actually there's a there's a the BLM have a special person that we have to pay for as part of cost recovery to do that. So it costs a, a, a ton of money to do this. Um, and then lead the conversation with government agencies around safety, commercial activity, and all, all the other elements. So there's some questions here. Um, outside services at burningman.org. Please give us your thoughts and give us your feedback and give us your input. We want the, pro the program is set up to serve you and to protect the culture. And I know we're all in the same boat here. I have a question over here. Can we take the microphone over there? I got one. Thank you. you. Dragonfly again. Uh, this is fantastic. And thank you for being so transparent, first and foremost. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Two, at some point, you must be rating some of these vendors. Or you've worked with them for years. And I realize there's issues with preferred vendors or not. But is there some way from a camp standpoint to have a preferred vendors list or they've been scored in the past? I mean, everything. We're in a culture of five stars, four stars. What's the rating? Can we move towards that? It is something that is that is on our deck to, to look at. So there's a decommodification thing, and how do we recommend one business over mm -hmm. another, right? So there's a little philosophical wrangle happening internally at the moment about that. There are already some lists of businesses in Reno, so uh, we, yes, we're working on that. I will tell you what we do do is people who fail are not allowed to register for the program. So, and we have we have a record of people who dump water, provide bad service, we get a ton of negative feedback, whatever that, however that is manifest, we have that route, the BLM have that route, we communicate with the government, you need, a com you need an SRP from the government and an outside services contract from us. So the bad boys are booted out. And then in the instance of shared collaboration, one of the things we talked about earlier was the idea of sharing camp director contact if they consent. We'd love to share a, a 20K generator with our neighborhood. But there's no way we're going to be able to reach out to those people you know, two months in advance. We don't have their info. So if we could get towards that, we're only campus 75, but all of our neighborhood camps are 75. Right. And we know about our power needs. Right. Um, this is a, there's a yes and 
there's a surprising uh, amount of kind of things that trickle down from that. It's a conversation that placement are having permanently, and it is things are revolving. Uh, we just need to figure out solutions. I am done.